artist and I've been teaching for over 50 years. Teaching children and teaching adults and I really enjoy the teaching and I paint everything that I see. If you're wondering where I get my inspiration, we travel. We travel all over the world. Also, I come from New York, and New York is an interesting place to paint. It's very colorful. Buildings, the, the traffic, the cabs, the people. And now, get your palette, get your brushes, and let's get started. Hi, welcome to The Painter's Palette. My name is Judy Wengerwitz. I live in Fairfax County and I like to teach painting. Today I'm going to do a painting which I haven't done really before and I'm doing a painting of the marketplace. These are people shopping in New York City where I am originally from. How am I going to do this? And I'm going to do the hair first of these people. Colors I'm using are ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and I'm going to start painting the heads. Putting a little bit more blue into this combination. Let's do some color in the people's clothes now. This is a combination of some cerulean blue. to me like everything here is going to be done in some color of blue. This is ultramarine blue. Uh, rather than use another blue, this time I'm going to make this man here wearing a yellow. And I'm going to make him have some dark pants. Let's change his clothes a little bit too.
Now these, this background, let's go ahead and make sort of a, a greenish color umbrella. Uh, here are some fish. This is this is a, actually a marketplace in New York City. So we got some ice underneath this fish. That way, your fish. Oops, your fish won't spoil. And let's get some apples. I'm putting some lines in the basket. Let's get a little bit of another umbrella here. Up and making a little bit more uh, <sighs> a pattern. It stopped again. This paint that I'm using is watercolor paint. And right now, I'm just using some simple uh, pointy brushes. I'm getting color on here so I can see what colors the things are. I will get them on a little darker after a while. As a matter of fact, oh, get it darker right now. This is cerulean blue. Actually, get some color on the face. This is a burnt sienna, a little bit of blue mixed with it.
background color here. And again, I'm using burnt sienna. I'm painting some color behind the figures. Oh, let's make another little table back here with some other kind of fruits and vegetables here. It's a little dark, a little bright. Let's see if I can get another color here. I'm painting some boxes back here, and these boxes will have some sort of fruit in them or vegetables. Let's make some, about some lettuce. This green is hooker's green. And then I will add a little, uh, probably ultramarine blue or a little cobalt blue to the hooker's green to change the green so that the different colors. The other boxes here. Well, I'm trying to uh, paint some of these figures, and this is in an outdoor marketplace in New York City, probably in. Um, Chinatown. And let's put a little backpack on him. He's shopping. So he's got a dark backpack on. He's going shopping in Chinatown. Again, the colors are, this is um, blue, ultramarine blue. The colors are getting a little dark, which helps because it shows a little bit of a contrast between the background and the figures themselves. I can't wait to do this person's face because the color on the face is going to fill in that one spot. Put some dark pants on him too. Again, a mixture of, I'm using this brush because it's a good size and it comes to a fairly good point.
Oh boy, this is really dark now. Let's go ahead and paint this backpack. Oh, we have gotten a really dark color over here. But I'm going to leave this dark color because I can then outline things with dark paint. And outlining them again. There we go in the background again. And this is a light blue. Probably, maybe a combination of cerulean blue and uh, cobalt blue. I'm, I'm painting the background behind all these to make the figures and the umbrellas stand out. Once again, I'm changing the colors to give me some pattern. Okay, how about a little design right now? A little design on the umbrella. A little green. There goes my little wiggly lines here. That might be too dark. Let's get it a little lighter. Getting it a little bit scribbly because I want it to be scribbly. These colors don't necessarily have to mean anything. I just picked out colors that I thought would look good. Sometimes I pick them out because they follow each other. Here's green, here's green, and here. They don't have to be a special fruit. I'm just going ahead and adding color to it for pattern and just for color. Again, I'm trying to show a busy marketplace scene. Get some yellow bananas down here. I'm painting this box a different shade. It's not really yellow at all, is it? This box here is more of a burnt sienna. So it's a little bit darker. Getting some hair in a little darker here. And maybe even this backpack 
a little darker. Making the back, the, the line, the outline on the backpack dark. Okay, let's go with this tall figure here. Here comes another figure. What color am I going to make this figure? Okay. Let's see. What's he wearing? Some color behind these men. So here comes the box. Let's outline the top of the box. Okay some cracks in this box. Those cracks or those lines in the box will help again with a design of a pattern. Well, the market is very busy all the time and this one I always feel that these markets are very colorful because they have a variety of fruit, fish, and and when you look at the entire thing, it's just a mass of color. Doing these different size boxes also helps me break up the pattern. I haven't done that many people but I'm breaking it up. The colors I'm using now are an orange and a yellow ochre and a burnt sienna. And actually, back here, we've got some other. These are barrels. We have these barrels that are rounded. Looking to see what there is to buy. And Here's another umbrella, and this umbrella is a red. This red is a combination of a crimson red and some kind of light red. Perhaps it's a scarlet red. It adds a lot of color to the painting, and uh, I'm going to add touches of red through the entire painting to, to continue that red. Some of these colors are too strong and 
Here's the outline again of that combination red of the two colors. And that looks like a nice umbrella. going to put a little bit of a gray in the background so that I don't only have bright colors. I have mixed gray and I've mixed a dark color like the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, which I'm doing at this minute. I'm using a dark brown and I am, as I say, using all kinds of things to outline my figures and my boxes and my umbrellas. Um, people are shopping here and it's probably springtime because they have a lot of apples and um, other fruit. Let's get some apples here. Here comes some apples. A lot of apples here. And we're gonna get some Bananas. Let me try, take another little brush here. And right now I'm taking a small brush just to outline some of the things. Yeah, here's a little brush here, which forms a point. outline some of the things. Outline several of the other things on the painting. For instance, the pockets, the arms, the wrinkles, the faces, the nose, perhaps the mouth. So I did go to this, these markets when I was in New York. I went to um, the Chinese places, and they had Chinese lettering, which I can't do right now because I have to see the lettering, but, so it was a mass, a mass of color, almost like an abstract. And let's take a bigger brush here. I'm taking a little bigger brush to color in some of the windows. This brush is a square brush and it helps me get square shapes on my paper. It also covers a lot of paper with water. still using this big square brush and I'm covering some of the background again with clear water. Trying to decide what color 
should I paint this background now? Here's a little drip mark, which I lifted up. Oops. Didn't even see it. Okay. At this point, I've used almost every, tried every color. When I paint, I usually get a color scheme going, and this is a warm color scheme. Mostly just the blues, but everything else is in warm shades. I've got to outline my bananas. using a narrow brush to outline bananas. Filling in some dark areas, again, behind the light areas to make the lights stand out. A little touch on the faces to give some color to the people. Adding some shadows to the faces on one side. I'm just painting this in a uh, like a silhouette. a lot of figures, but without detail. And the figures could get smaller as they get in the distance, which shows a busy, busy marketplace. Okay, let's go over here and do a little outlining here, too. Still outline some of the clothing. And with, again, with wrinkles, with folds. Some color on the hair. The hair was just a dull, flat color. This way I give a little shape to the hair and a little color to the top of the painting. Same colors. These are my favorite colors, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And depending on how much color I use, it could get black or this has a brown tone. And let's get some eyes. Mixing more colors just to break up the background and have spots of color here and This barrel is half full, so we can't see what's in it. That window is a little light, so let's get it a little darker. And 
a little darker with my square brush. Hopefully the painting has a gold tone, but it's inter interrupted with light blue, with some green. I'm putting some of these colors in, and I don't care exactly what they are, because if I'm walking around sometimes, everything is a blur of color. And so right now, that's exactly what's happening. And I'm going to glaze over this. What I did was just took, took a little bit of a red color and glazed over this. Let's go back here and get some color on here, too. With a little orange red. There it goes, right over everything. That gives it a little bit of a golden look. This is a flat brush, and so it gives me a nice e sharp edge. Again, I'm using this burnt sienna, sort of mixing it with every color I have. Oh, I see a drip. So I just lifted it right off by pushing my brush down onto to the paper, and it lifted off. Let's get a little bit more red in those apples. This is a little umbrella here. We're going to get it. Okay. Oh, this umbrella here, slightly different than the other. Okay, let's get some oranges here now. Add some more yellow, and when I put it on, our combination of yellow and a little bit of yellow ochre, maybe with a touch of orange to make it even more colorful. I think we'll get some more green, oh, cucumbers or 
Let's see. My hook is green and a little bit of blue mixed with the hook is green. So in some places, my cucumbers look a little darker. Looks like this woman is wearing green stockings today. And so is this one. Must have been a sale <laughs> on green stockings. Oh, it looks like a few people are wearing green stockings these days. I don't know if I like green stockings. Certainly adds color to the painting. This guy, this grocery store, bought a lot of barrels of stuff. Let's go ahead and... Okay, let's... This is a very tall woman here. Let's go ahead and give her some dark stockings, too. Okay, let's make some more pants. This time, this guy, the other one had blue pants. This one has brown pants. And he's very comfortable in those brown pants. They're not blue jeans, they're brown jeans. She's going to be wearing a belt. A little on the heavy side. And he's got a jacket on. Fix this guy's jacket. And this blue outfit looks really nice. In order to get that, I combine a little bit of yellow ochre, a little tiny drop of orange, and I mixed a little purple even. Okay, what's in the window? Let's see what, there's going to be a counter. Let's put a counter here in the background and I know what, a scale. And probably man's head behind this counter. Using some dark color, I'm going to draw the outline around the outline of a scale. 
I think I will do a few little stri stripes over here. And get some of that window a little bit darker. Again, I'm using my ultramarine blue. Putting a little, some little darks in some of the clothes, and maybe even in the fish. Wonder what kind of fish these are. This man here has and he's holding a bag. He's got some things in his bag. He's weighing some things. And more pattern. That's what makes a marketplace an interesting place to visit. Now let's take this square brush again and put in just some colors back here. Get some color behind those umbrellas, behind those people, just to fill in the area and give some life to it. in there. It doesn't necessarily have to have a pattern every place you look. Still using the same mixtures of colors. Can make what looks like part of a building here. Putting in some more colors, maybe in the background, to make it look like there are buildings there. And there are buildings like in a city street.
and the colors I use again are a gray and a gray is made from my usual ultramarine and burnt sienna but if I add a little bit more ultramarine it's a blue gray okay let's get some windows up there putting some windows in those buildings, or at least the shape of a building. I'm gonna put some windows in that light area. Well, first I'll go to outline windows or buildings. This gives me a little bit of a beige because it went over some yellow. So it gave me a little bit of a yellowy beige color. here some calligraphy to finalize my painting and to make it a little bit sharper. Here and there, I touch up some outlines. some in the distance are getting smaller. Because of that, it makes the figures look like they're moving. We've got some figures across the street in the back background. Dark shapes, silhouettes. Remember, the more figures and the smaller they get, the busier the street looks.
just back looking at my painting, and I'm almost finished. I hope you enjoyed watching me do this painting. I liked the colors in them. I used various brushes just to try out what they would be like. I'm not quite finished yet. I would like to take it back to my studio and work on it a little bit more. And hopefully that you will look at my webpage, which says judyswatercolors.com. It has some of the same colors in them. And I still have some things to do, but not a lot. Thanks for coming. Bye.